Starting a brand new Instagram account from zero followers is no small feat. It takes time, it takes effort, and it takes some good strategy to be able to build a strong following on Instagram. Today, I'm not only going to be sharing my thoughts and insights into how you can do this, this is also going to be part of a series of me actually doing it myself. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know that recently I started a new business. It's called McKinsey Studios and I'm very excited about my new business baby. But as with any new business, I'm starting a new Instagram page and I thought it would be really fun to document this process and turn it into a bit of a case study for the Dishing Up Digital podcast. So this is like part two and I guess a three part series and what I'm going to do in a couple of months time is film a little bit of an update or record an update on this and see how these strategies actually played out and what was the most effective and impactful in terms of moving that follower count up. Now I have had the account live for almost a month now, maybe like three weeks, I want to say. So I'm already seeing some growth, so I can share some of the strategies there. I want you to create a really solid business plan, something written out, not just in your head. And the reason why this is so important, not just for your business, but for your social media strategy as a whole, is it gives you the perfect foundation for creating content that is just super aligned with your goals, your mission, what you want to achieve, and also your audience. A big part of building a business plan is doing your market research and your audience research. And in that, you're gonna come up with so many content ideas. You're also gonna get a really strong understanding of who you're actually talking to. You know, are you speaking to a 50 year old mum of four kids or are you speaking to a, I don't know, 19 year old Gen Zer? <laughs> the language that you'd use for these different audiences would be a little bit different. It wouldn't be exactly the same. And it would also kind of help you decide what app you should be using, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Instagram, whether it's LinkedIn. So you don't wanna be just launching into your business, making an Instagram and then realizing, oh, actually I'm targeting a really professional network here. Maybe I should have gone on LinkedIn. It will also help you with understanding where your audience is at the moment, the current problems that they're facing and how you could solve those problems with your business, but also your content. How can you create content that really hits a nerve with them, sparks an emotion, and create some potential excitement about your new business and new account. So with McKinsey Studios, we are a content lifestyle studio space for hire for both events and for personal photo shoots. It's a space that's set up specifically for entrepreneurs, content creators, creative people, influencers who need like not just a walled, a white walled studio, they need, you know, cozy homey setups, almost like an Ikea meets Airbnb meets photography studio. <laughs> that is the vibe that we're going for. So I was able to really flesh out my goals, who I was targeting, obviously Aucklanders, because it's a physical studio, not an online business like I've run in the past. So I needed to make sure everything I did was very Auckland focused. I also now have just a list of content ideas. Whenever I get stuck, whenever I'm feeling unmotivated, I go back to my business plan. I look at those audience details. I look at the list of, you know, ideas and goals. And it's also good to think about, okay, what am I trying to achieve here? For me, it's trying to book out a studio in Auckland. It's trying to get as many customers through as possible. So my kind of posting schedule, the content I'm creating, the call to actions are going to be aligned with those goals. If I was say a company like a yoga studio and I actually already had a really good client base, so maybe I didn't actually want new customers, I just wanted to increase the community and build the relationship with my existing clientele, your Instagram content would probably be quite different to mine. Maybe I'm doing a lot more reels because I'm looking for that viral exposure because I'm trying to get more and more people into my studio versus perhaps that Pilates or yoga instructor isn't doing that. Maybe they're doing more live streams because they're building that community and fostering that relationship. So you can see how your goals are gonna impact the content you're creating. So I launched the Instagram page for McKinsey Studios two months, almost two months before we actually open for customers. The reason I did this is because I am realistic. I know that it takes time to build a following, to build an audience, a community on Instagram. It's not gonna happen overnight. So I want to be able to launch and already have an amazing engaged customer base. 
I see so many new businesses making this mistake and just launching with all of this fanfare and being like, look, you can go buy our product. And I know there is this kind of, I don't know, this marketing rule or technique around instant gratification. Like you want to launch something and then have people be able to buy it instantly. And maybe, you know, there is some truth to that depending on the product. Maybe if I was launching a new mascara brand or, you know, a product where there's already a lot of competition in the market, maybe I would want to do my pre-launch period quite short, have it maybe only like a week to create all of that buzz because I know there's already so many people out there doing the same thing as me and I really need to get out there in front of customers as soon as possible to get my reviews, to differentiate myself. But in this case for McKinsey Studios, I wanted to document the whole process of creating the studio, of decking it out, buying the furniture. I wanted to get people invested choosing the furniture with me, doing polls, getting feedback from the audience. And this has actually been the best thing ever because my followers are making suggestions that I hadn't thought of. We're getting inquiries from customers who want to book in as soon as possible. And I can ask them, hey, this is what we've got in the space so far. Is there anything else we need to provide to make this the best experience for you? And it is just brilliant. I do not know why more customers or more businesses, I should say, don't do this and share their ideas early document the process. You can do this with product based businesses as well. Say you're launching a candle brand, launch it early and get feedback on scents and fragrances that your audience loves. Start building up the community by documenting the process of making your first prototype candle, you know, the first batch, realizing that the jar that you got actually sucks or your candle's not burning evenly. So you're reformulating. I would love to see more of that kind of stuff as a customer myself. And once again, like I said, it gives you more time to build that audience. You have to be realistic with Instagram. It's not like TikTok where you're going to grow viral overnight and get 100,000 new followers. It happens to some people, but the 99% of us does not happen that way. Tip number three is to focus on creating good content. Put all of your time and energy into just creating beautiful, engaging content. In particular, I feel like new businesses should focus on storytelling content, storytelling content that can really captivate this new audience. You know, there's a lot of competition out there in every industry on Instagram. Like even for me, I know there's other studios and other event hire spaces. And to help myself stand out, one of the easiest things you can do is talk about the personal story of your brand. Some example posts um, I've done on Instagram and also TikTok, which we'll get to a second about why I'm on TikTok. Spoiler alert, that's coming as well. Um, but I've done some posts where I talk about the mission behind the studio. I've talked about my personal story of being a model and actually being told I was too overweight to be a model and to walk on the runway. And then talking about, about where I am now in my business journey and how I've created this space to be exclusive because everyone deserves to feel like a supermodel and get beautiful pictures. The other piece I'm kind of leaning into is a pain point with my audience around creating content. A lot of people struggle to create content in their own home. So I mean, leaning into the story of, you know, do you have dirty washing cropped out of all of your Instagram photos? <laughs> Are you struggling with the kids and getting content for your business? Like this this is me, this is what I've struggled with, and this is how I'm solving that problem through the use of a studio. The other thing I'm doing is posting lots of little mini vlogs and daily vlogs and behind the scenes content. So telling the story of my day as a studio owner and the story of building this business from scratch, both the good and the bad, the exciting and the ugly, because people love coming along for that journey. This is something I'm so passionate about being a former journalist, but I truly believe that social media is all about storytelling at the end of the day and good content that goes viral is just the content that has a really good story to it. Tip number four is all about your posting schedule. Yes, I have to say consistency is important because I feel like I say that in every episode and every single digital marketing expert talks about the C word consistency. But specifically when you're launching a brand new account, I think it's very important to actually have a burst of posts in your first three days that you're launching. So I think I even post, posted twice in one day, which I never do on Instagram, but I think it was the first day or the second day. I can't quite remember if I actually ended up doing that. But 
Either way, my plan was to get a good amount of posts, three to four posts up there in the first three days. The reason I do this is because you're trying to make a lot of noise. You're trying to attract new followers. And if there isn't existing content on your page for your followers to binge watch, it's going to be harder to convert them, to get them over as an actual follower. Like if they've just found you on a random reel, they see your page or maybe a friend shared your page, they click over, they look at your profile. If there's only one post for them to look at, that's not always enough to hook them in to press that follow button to actually convert them into a follower, not just a viewer, not just an eyeball on your post. And that's what we want. This is our goal, remember. We're trying to get over that hump of, you know, getting to our first 200, 500, and 1,000 followers. So it's important to have some content that's gonna pull them in, captivate them, and one post isn't gonna do that. So for me, that first three or four days, it was getting a post up every day, single day, maybe even twice in a day, and making sure there's some good stuff for people to binge. I had a variety of content Content with um, reels, with a, a mini vlog, and then also a carousel that explained a little bit more about the business, our story, our vision, our passion, how you could work with us, so that immediately people who discovered the page could learn all of that stuff. And you guys know I'm really big on keeping up the variety in your content schedule, having different types of reels, having graphics, having carousels, having still photos. I think it's really important to keep your audience engaged, to have that variety, and also to connect with certain audiences that only consume certain types of content. So of course, I was also on Instagram Live and I was also on Instagram Story. Once you have had your big sort of posting spree in the early days of starting your account, then you can go back to a consistent schedule that works for you. So for me at the moment, this is only posting two to three times a week. Again, we're not quite in the launch phase. We're in the pre-launch phase. So again, once we open for bookings, I'll go back to posting every single day for a bit of a blitz. Um, but for now, it's all about creating a sustainable posting schedule. And for me, that's two to three times a week. And that works totally fine. Tip number five is another important one. Collaboration. You need exposure to new people, new customers, new followers. And honestly, the best way to do that on Instagram is by collaborating with another account and getting to almost borrow their audience, getting an exposure to the community that someone else has already built. So for product-based businesses, I see this doing, I see, I see people doing this a lot with loop giveaways. For myself, it was kind of convenient because I could collaborate with myself. So. A lot of the, the reels that I've posted, I've actually done it as a collab post between my Ellen McKenzie account and McKenzie Studios. But if you are, you know, if you know somebody that you could work with, if you know another local business you could reach out to in your area that you could collaborate with, if you could do a giveaway, if you could have an ambassador of some sorts, I really think this is worth the investment into organizing that if you are a brand new account. It's really made a difference for me in growing. We hit 250 followers, I think, already on the McKinsey Studios account. And I know a lot of that is coming from my existing audience on Instagram. However, this brings me nicely to point number six. The source where a lot of my other followers are coming from are actually from TikTok. They're discovering me on TikTok and they're coming across and following me on Instagram. I know that they're doing this because number one, it's happened on my previous account, my or my Ellen McKenzie account, still my account now. <laughs> and I also have people DMing me about it. They're like, hey, I found you on TikTok. When does your studio open? I really want to hire it for X, Y, and Z. So this is why I encourage you and why tip number six is all about going to other platforms because it will help you accelerate your growth on Instagram, being able to maximize the search and opportunities and audiences on other platforms like YouTube, like TikTok, like Pinterest. Multi-platform content marketing is key for me. And I've recorded an episode about this on the podcast, so I'll link that down below if you want to hear me talk more about this. Um, for now, I'm just going to move on to the next point because we all know I love my multiple platforms, okay? <laughs> my final tip, tip number seven, may not be something that everyone agrees with, but it's my strategy that I'm gonna be using to grow this account. And that is using a combination of organic content and also paid ads. Being realistic, I want to grow quickly, and I do believe with Instagram these days, you need to be putting some money behind some paid ads as well as your organic content. Have the best of both worlds, guys, the organic and the paid. And I'm also gonna be doing a retargeting ad. We have a launch party, a physical party, where we have a whole bunch of entrepreneurs and influencers coming along, uh, media experts, all of that kind of stuff. 
and I'm hoping to create a lot of buzz, people, you know, coming over and clicking on our page after seeing the launch party on other people's stories. And I'm going to strategically have a little bit of a retargeting ad running the day after the launch. So anyone that saw someone else's stories might have looked at the page but not followed quite yet, I'm going to hit them with a retargeting ad with a special discount code. So you can be quite strategic with your paid ads. For me, it's not about just boosting random things here and there. You want to have a funnel, you want to have a discount, you want to have retargeting ads. All of those things are what make paid ads on Instagram actually impactful and actually giving you results for your business. I also know from firsthand experience running my Alan McKenzie account that for me, putting some money aside and investing in paid ads will result in just as much followers as a 30 day reels challenge. For me, I do not have the time to be doing a 30 day reels challenge. I have two businesses to run. I have a lot on my plate. And for me, paid ads is something that I can set up and just let it churn away in the background. So that is gonna be it for today's episode. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you are listening on the podcast, make sure you're subscribed to listen to the updated episode that will be coming up in a few months time. And we're gonna reflect on some of these strategies and see what's actually worked. And we'll have a little bit of a check-in on the account and see what we're at in terms of followers. If you guys have any more topic requests, episode requests for me, don't forget to slide into my Instagram DMs and let me know. I love chatting to you guys on Instagram. But for now, I'll catch you in the next episode.